In this model, we will cover the basics of Deep Carries data model. The Carries is built around a relational star schema. So you have uh, the table with the actual transaction uh, at the center and have then the mentioned tables with the master data detail. For example, customers with customer names, customer location and other details, accounts um, like um, account names, account groupings, account codes and others, products, scenarios and time. So when you identify a particular transaction, you are using what we refer to as a cube that's using uh, that's a collection of dimensions. And for example, it, this cube or this fact table, star schema fact table, is using uh, these five dimensions. And um, this is connected to the dimension via an ID. So the, the customer's ID too would be McQueen in Los Angeles, and that would be the link there. And equally, this applies to all other accounts. This is just the most effective way to manage and analyze data because you're really only storing what is relevant and when you're analyzing, but also for planning purposes where you quickly need to write back transactions, uh, is absolutely the fastest approach because we can write a lot of transactions for the particular details back into the database and then also for reading purposes uh, we store very effectively only the IDs in the master table in the master in the master table in the fact table and uh, all the um, dimension details are only stored once in the dimension tables so the equivalent uh, in, in Actaris is when we're looking now at the modeler, we have the, the dimension dim account here. We can see now the ID and then all the levels of the dimension. And you can also simulate uh, the hierarchies. So one thing that we are not doing in Actaris, we are not storing hierarchies. You can use the hierarchies as you need them. And you can simulate this uh, by just taking the column that you want to use, drag it into the header and for example if you want to simulate a hierarchy between parent account, alternate key and account name then this is the hierarchy and this is also how it works in all the front ends so if you for example want to have a drill down path in a Power BI visual you just drag and drop whatever parts of the hierarchy you want and you then have the drill down path uh, works in the same way in the pivot table uh, in Excel. So it's an ext extremely flexible way where you can really exactly have the hierarchies as you need them for the particular purpose and, and not, not for th forcing users into having uh, predefined hierarchies. The cool thing now also with uh, the new features in Ecaris 21.2 is that uh, these hierarchy levels can be logic driven. So as opposed to storing them in the database, this can be based on a calculation where you can then even use other tables in the database for reference purposes. For example, if you have some detailed price table and you want to have a price table in the product uh, dimension that's automatically updating according to the latest price, then you could set up here a calculated column that just takes the uh, data from another table and uh, uses it here in the dimension. And then you can also do cool things like classification. So you could say if a uh, price is below 2000, then it's group A, and if it's um, uh, below a particular threshold, it's another grouping. So this grouping would then also be dynamically calculated, but you still have all the options that you have in a carries for write-back analysis purposes. So when you do your write-back, it will still correctly write back to the underlying transactions in the group uh, that at a particular time are part of part of this group and same with the uh, with the cube so the cube is just a collection of dimensions for example if you look at the finance cube here that's using um, five dimensions account date department group organization and scenario uh, you can even look at this now and we can see you know how the star schema analysis works so here we see now the pivot i can now just take for example the accounts into the rows 
the scenario into the columns and now I see the two dimensions account and scenarios across and the facts are here uh, shown in the intersection of the of the dimension so a value uh, in an Acaris uh, cube or in a fact table, star scheme fact table in general is identified by the selection of a base level hierarchy, so not a grouping in all of the dimensions, so that uniquely identifies a, a particular value, so for example this particular account name, this particular scenario and then the, also a base level element in all the other dimensions, a particular date, a particular cost center and a particular organization, so that uniquely identifies a value and everything else, you know, we have aggregations of, for example, accounts or organizations or any of the other dimensions, and that would be an aggregation. In the database itself, this looks like this. So if you look at the Acarius database, so you always have a single uh, database, typically on SQL Server, and in this database you have then the dimensions and um, cubes. Uh, the dimensions and cubes are always have the prefix all up. Um, you can see we have a few other prefixes here as well, or schemas as they're called in SQL Server. These are then typically for the what we would refer to as staging table. So this is the data as it comes from a particular source system, for example from NetSuite or NYOB, or you see some other things here as well. Um, this is typically something that you can't change. So this is coming only from the source system, whereas in the OLAP system you can change everything, so dimension structures and the actual uh, values. So here we see in our typical fact table for the finance cube, the one that we just saw before, with the five dimensions, scenario, date, organization, department, group and account. And then we see two items that are always part of the Actarius fact table, which is the amount in the text well for the comments. If you're using an enterprise tenant, then you also have all the history there. So uh, it's not just the current value for a particular set of coordinates, but you have the validity there as well. So in this case, this, val this value is valid from this particular start date to this end date. And if the end date is 999, this means it is still, that's the current one. If there's an end date there, then this means it's only valid from this start date here to this date. So this just gives you the entire history. Um, of uh, a particular data point. So you can see Martin changed this uh, today to this, but previously Richie uh, had entered another value. So you have the, the entire history of the value there. And the same with the dimensions. So if we look now here at the dimensions, so this is just a SQL query on the uh, account dimension. So we see here now the account dimension that we just saw before in the modeler. We have the ID, we have the account name, these are mandatory columns in, in a carry, so you always have to have these two. Uh, source is also a mandatory column, but that's typically not visible to the user. Here uh, we differentiate if the data is coming from a user or if it was created by the system. So if you're using a, an app and the data is coming, for example, from NetSuite, and this would say system here, so it was not entered by a user. So these three are always there, and then the rest is, is completely up to the user. You can have pretty much as many as you want here, and they can either be physical, physically stored in the dimension, or they can be calculated. And it looks the same in, in, um, in Power BI, and it looks the same in Excel. So you have then the fact table, you have the dimension tables that you have um, in Power BI or in Excel, and then you have the relationships between them and it's typically always between the ID and the fact table, for example, organization that would have the ID for the organization and that corresponds to the ID in the dimension table. So there's always this link and um, yeah, now as we already discussed, dimension has always these two. Uh, the source is not visible in the model, but that, that's the third one. And so the ID is uh, automatically generated by the system, so it carries takes care of all this, so the users don't have to worry about the IDs. The name is 
freely assigned but needs to be unique. So that also uniquely identifies um, an element in a carrot. And here you're completely free what uh, you can use. So these we refer to as attributes and attributes then make up a hierarchy level as we discussed before. So you have to drill down from for example calendar year to English month's name and so on. So this concludes um, an overview of the Actaris data model. We hope to see you in one of the other training modules.